Hello everybody, welcome to this special presentation. Today we have the honor to host Mr. Abraham Drust, CEO of Carla Goldfields. If you take a look at this company though, technically speaking, the stock made a solid breakout here on April 20th. Right now, since then, the stock has performed pretty well. It's stabilizing, so the new entry point on that stock, technically speaking, is around 31 cents 51. So Mr. Drust is with us to tell you why his company should represent your next investment. They have a solid partner, Orico Gold and one of their gold project, which is called Lean Lake. So Mr. Joss, thank you for coming by. Thank you, Christian. Excellent. Now let's talk about the merger because Orico Gold and Alamos Gold will merge. Yes. Um, will this have an impact on your partnership with Orico Gold? Well, I think the short answer is that it will be positive. Okay. Uh, we understand that uh, the Carlisle project at Lynn Lake has mm. made the cut to okay. into MergeCo. Okay. It is one of their top development projects at this time. Okay. And we're taking that right out of their pitch book on the merger. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Now, now, I know that uh, in your presentation, I saw that there was $13 million that will be spent by Oricor and yourself on the project for yes. this year. Yes. So which portion will be allocated? Well, I know $2 million will be from you guys, yes. but which deposits will be will receive most of the money? Because you have two deposits in the Lean Link project, right? Yeah. Well, for your, uh, for your viewers, uh, mm -hmm. the best place to look, of course, is the presentation at carlislegold.com. Mm -hmm. But they'll see a map there which shows the Farley Lake deposit and the McClellan deposit. Mm -hmm. And both deposits are the subject of a feasibility study by Orico, okay. soon to be called Alamos, okay. on successful closing of the transaction. Okay. But the funds are to be equally spent on a feasibility study to bring those deposits simultaneously into production, feeding a single mill. Okay. Now, in terms of the plant, will there be your plant uh, in which you deposit there? Is it like in the Mac McLennan or the Farley Lake deposit? Well, the concept as we envisioned it mm -hmm. uh, was a single mill at McClellan and okay. ore being trucked from Farley. Farley, uh, Farley Lake is the higher grade, mm -hmm. 3.2 gram open pit deposits, very high grade, mm -hmm. uh, being tr crushed, uh, mined crushed and transported to the McClellan mill. Mm -hmm. And then ore from McClellan as well being commingled at that point for a weighted average grade of 2.2 grams through the mill. Okay. Now, uh, why two feasibility study on those two deposits? Why not just one to be minimize cost? Well, it's one feasibility study, but okay. it involves two deposits okay. feeding one mill. Okay, yes. I, I got it. Yes. Now, when is the feasibility study expected? Well, the feasibility study is ongoing. Last mm -hmm. week, we announced a feasibility study update. Mm -hmm. that, that news is posted to our website. Mm -hmm. Uh, but effectively, uh, the, the spend is underway, as, I, as you mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. They're spending commitment for $13 million this year, of which $9 million goes into feasibility. Okay. According to the timelines, mm -hmm. we expect another $11 million into feasibility next year. Okay. And so they should be fully vested, going from 25% to 51% by the end of 2016. Okay. So that would mean, and effectively, the agreement is that they spend $20 million yeah. to go to 51%. Okay. We think they have three years to do it. We think they'll do it in two. Mm -hmm. And the third year will be spent going through the permitting process leading up to a construction decision. Okay. Now, one thing that struck me is that you signed an agreement with the Colomb First Nation. Yeah. Yes. Um, the, the agreement, they say that they will help you to go to the benefit impact agreement study. Yes. So will they fund the study or how are they going to help you guys with this? Well, the impact and benefit agreement mm -hmm. is envisioned. We have a negotiation protocol established mm -hmm. under an expiration agreement between Orico Gold, Carlisle Gold Fields, uh, the Marcel Colomb First Nation mm -hmm. and the Marcel Colomb Development Corporation. Okay. So all four parties are signatories to an expiration agreement mm -hmm. which governs the, the, uh, the uh, feasibility study. Okay. And once the feasibility work is done, mm -hmm. uh, then the permitting begins and the, uh, effectively then Orico knows what it has on its hands mm -hmm. and it's in a position to negotiate the IBA with the Marcel Colomb First Nation. Okay, so it's not done yet actually, there's more to be negotiated. In Absolutely. The okay. Yeah. Um, now, would you be the operator of the Lean Lake project, or would you consider Carla Goldfields to be some kind of a project generator and they'll get into the next project if this project turns out to be successful? Uh, short answer is Orico slash Alamos will be the operator okay. as they operate the feasibility study. They are the mining engineers. Mm -hmm. We are the geologists. We okay. are the explorers and developers. Okay. So we've essentially handed them 25% uh, interest mm -hmm. in, uh, in the Lynn Lake assets, mm -hmm. which hosts a, a measured and indicated and inferred global resource of 5 million ounces. Okay. And we've, uh, they, they chose the Farley Lake and McClellan deposits, which have a measured and indicated resource mm -hmm. of 1.6 million ounces. Okay. They chose those as their first targets for the feasibility study. Mm -hmm. But there's several million ounces behind that project. So okay. I expect uh, 
you know, should they make a positive construction decision, mm -hmm. that uh, they'll be in Lynn Lake for a good long time. Okay. Now, one thing that struck me is that you mentioned in your um, uh, clip on your website that you wanted to turn your resources into reserves. Yes. Is that a process that will be done during the feasibility study? Correct. Okay. Yes, exactly. So, uh, we have measured and indicated resources, mm -hmm. which is the subject of a preliminary economic assessment, the results of which we report mm -hmm. in our, uh, in, on our website in mm -hmm. our presentation. Mm -hmm. The project has a 34% IRR. Okay. Under, the PI, under, the, under the PEA, mm -hmm. it envisions a 12-year mine life producing 145,000 ounces per year mm -hmm. at an average throughput grade of 2.2 grams, which is very high for open pit. Yeah. Uh, but in essence, um, the feasibility study then takes the measured and indicated resources and then equivocally puts them into mineable reserves because it, it is really the final test okay. of, of economic uh, viability. Because okay. I'm asking you that question mostly because I wanted to uh, assess your have a some clue because uh, also so that your project could be comparable to Premier Gold Mines uh, which also sold their assets and uh, and the thing is I was wondering if you guys will just if the feasibility is positive just sell it to Orico Alamos Gold and get it to the next project because well we're talking about possible million of dollars if, if that happens. You know our objective really yeah. is to be a minority partner on ultimate okay. construction and production at Lynn Lake. I okay. mean we'll own 40 percent okay. after Arico Alamos earn their 51 percent mm -hmm. by spending 20 million okay. and go to 60 percent by delivering and publishing a feasibility study okay. that's compliant with securities regulations and um, the permitting regulations mm -hmm. around mine permitting and environmental permitting. Okay. So provided they give us a document that's compliant with all those requirements, mm -hmm. they get, they go to 60%. Okay. And then we are effectively fully participating at 40. Okay. Now our goal is to be a minority partner. Okay. Now, in the, uh, in the words of Paradigm Capital, who put out research coverage on the company last week with a $1.75 price target, yeah. they said, now here's a takeout candidate if we ever saw one. So okay. you understand there's a tension here. Okay. Uh, but our job is to advance the project faithfully. And mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we're very pleased to be working with, uh, with Arico and Alamos. Excellent. Now, talking of Manitoba, because it's a uh, mining-friendly jurisdiction, um, what could be three characteristics that makes your project uh, stand out? compared to other projects in the region? Sure. Well, I would say uh, what attracted me to the project mm -hmm. as an investor before I became CEO in the company mm -hmm. was grade. Okay. The Farley Lake and the McClellan combined grade of 2.2 grams open pit mm -hmm. is the highest development grade open pit uh, opportunity mm -hmm. in North America today. Okay. So grade, and then look at infrastructure. Infrastructure, mm -hmm. there's a paved highway from Winnipeg, there's a rail line, okay. we're on the Manitoba hydroelectric grid, we pay some of the lowest power costs in the world in Manitoba, mm -hmm. and effectively uh, it's brownfields. So the permitting challenge is somewhat simplified because this is not pristine wilderness. Mm -hmm. Both the deposits that are currently under feasibility mm -hmm. actually produced a couple hundred thousand ounces each in the 80s and 90s. Okay, so the mill is already there, if I understand right. There was a mill there okay. that, that actually processed the ore back then, but that mill's gone now. Okay. But, but interesting point you raise because we have no environmental tailings liability because the ore was processed in Lynn Lake, okay. and the tailings ended up underground at one of the old mines as paste backfill. Mm, okay, I guess it was a great opportunity then. Well, in retrospect, it was. Okay. Now, would you consider, because I know um, junior companies have a lot of challenges in this tough gold environment. Uh, a lot of them need to raise cash. Uh, for instance, we know that one company, Stonery Diamonds, sold their production to a Blackstone. Yes. Uh, is that a strategy that you guys would consider? Uh, I know you have already $8.5 million in cash, but to be able to have some cash throughout the timeline to the feasibility study, is that an option you guys could consider, or you guys are struck with the agreement with Orico? You can do nothing so far with this. Well, no, we have we have perfect flexibility okay. to do what we need to do. Okay. Uh, the short answer is no. We don't anticipate selling gold forward. It's okay. not our choice to make. Quite frankly, it's okay. a joint venture decision. Okay. So, but at the end of the day, uh, we are cashed up, as you point out. We have uh, 8.5 million in the bank, mm -hmm. and that's uh, you know that's from a financing that was done by Arico to do a private placement into the company, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they own 19.9 percent, and okay. they're on a standstill for two years. They can't increase that position, but more importantly, they're earning into the asset through a joint venture. Okay. So we're cashed up. We're fully funded for the next two years. Mm -hmm. And we're in a pretty good place. Uh, we're not your average junior. Okay. <laughs> now, in terms of your burn rate, do you expect it to increase significantly during this year with the exploration program, or you expect it to be 
the same approximate. Well, uh, uh, yeah, certainly our, our GNA, mm -hmm. net of expiration, mm -hmm. you know, taking expiration aside for a moment, is about $1.9 million. Now, okay. that's all salaries, mm -hmm. legals, accounting, okay. heat, lights, and rent, all in, $1.9 million. Okay. When I was running Premier Royalty as CEO, which mm -hmm. is a company I founded and sold <laughs> to Sandstorm Gold, okay. our GNA was 2.2. Compare at the same time, Sam Storm Gold's G all in GNA was 4.5 at that time. So mm -hmm. we run a pretty lean operation. Okay. But in addition to that, this year we're spending two million on expiration as mm -hmm. our share of a four million dollar expiration commitment mm -hmm. outside the feasibility study area. Okay. Arico's funding the other two million. Okay. So we'll spend 3.9 million dollars this year, mm -hmm. but I expect we'll have some good news flow and some good material value value added uh, mm -hmm. during that time as well. But why have you decided to proceed with a stock consolidation of 6.5 to 1? Was it strategic? Well, why? Well, it was part of the restructuring of the company. I okay. recognized uh, early on when I, as I say, when I first became an investor and mm -hmm. then became CEO that the company really needed to be repositioned in the market. Okay. Because one of the problems it faced was that the economics on the project only came out after the market fell out of bed, as it were, in the yeah. gold in the gold space. Mm -hmm. In June of 2013, we remember a gold price came off $300. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared anymore. And quite frankly, so Carlisle puts out its numbers and the market yawns, right? And mm -hmm. we haven't caught up yet. Okay. But you, you, you made mention of the premier transaction with uh, Centera. They mm -hmm. put in $300 million for 50%, not for 100%. Valuing Premier's ounces at well over $100 an ounce. Okay. Uh, Probe was bought up by Goldcorp, valuing their ounces at well over $100 an ounce. These are recent transactions in the space. Mm -hmm. our, va our ounces today are valued at $10 an ounce. So okay. we see a deep value proposition here, and as I say, time okay. will tell. I think we're on the right track, and okay. uh, we're telling the story, and uh, you know, we have a, a solid partner spending money, mm -hmm. and uh, we're moving towards uh, a construction decision. And, uh, you know, the it's looking good. All right. Now, to finish, for an investor who's looking at this interview, who's looking at your project, your vision, Mr. Drost, uh, how would you, what would you tell him to convince him that Carla Goldfields should represent his next investment? Uh, you know, from my perspective, you know, from my perspective, um, you know, Carlisle is a junior mining company that's actually, you know, one of the rare companies that actually has an expiration budget and has a, a, a partner spending $20 million over the next three years. So why invest in Carlisle? Simply because it's a, it's a deep value proposition that is not so much world class in terms of its size, but it's a best in class. If you look at our presentation, you'll see cash costs in the Canadian $500 range, which at the current exchange rate is in the $400 US range. That's best in class by anyone's standards, and it's because of grade and infrastructure. Those are the key things to remember about Carlisle going forward. All right, so Mr. Goldfield, oh, Mr. Goldfield, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dress. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dress, I'm sure you have a lot on your plate for this year. I wish you we good do. luck with the feasibility study. And please don't hesitate to come back for a follow-up interview. Thanks so much, Christian. Appreciate no it. All right.